Atma Namaste Sumi. Atma Namaste everybody. Welcome to the session. Welcome to <laughs> what we are supposed to do today. Atma yes, looking forward to uh, an Can interesting... Get... Yes? Atma Namaste Sumi. Can we get recording of your session uh, it's there in the live streaming so if you can go to the live streaming it should be available people have been uh, mentioning and uh, looking into it you can go there and look at the earlier recordings uh, the ones that we've started when we've gone live so all the live streamings are there but please don't download it and send it to other people yes just give them the link to go and if they want to listen uh, you're most welcome to do that because if we miss something at least we can uh watch it and we can get in uh, yes understandable with yourself yes. correct correct yes um, so you can do that um, maybe Aditya if you can try try uh -huh. put the live stream there for them so they can go to the earlier live streams Aditya yeah I'll put the links to me thank I, you so I'll much share the link. Yeah, thank fair. you so much to me it will be on the chat so those of you who need to can go to that and uh, look at uh, namaste Atma yes, namaste, Atma, namaste. Atma Namaste Sumi. Atma Namaste everybody. So sorry, uh, it, it is very difficult for me to personally answer all your questions. It would take much longer. I, I'm hoping that whatever has been said, uh, because it's live and you can go back and listen to the recordings. That's I have awesome. made too many mistakes. So you can actually listen to them and learn from them and take it on. Now, if there is any mistakes in the recordings, in, in the words that I use, that would be my fault, not the... Uh, not uh, Bishop Leadbeaters, yeah? So please remember that. I can also make mistakes while I'm talking. So uh, let's officially go on to the live stream. Yesterday I almost forgot, so let's do that now. Okay, so let's close our eyes. Connect down to our palate. Inhale and exhale. Relax the body. I'm going to mute all of you. Can you meet the video also of everybody? Inhale and exhale. Relax the body. Feel yourself in the presence of God, in the presence of our beloved teacher, Grandmaster Chua. In the presence of all these great teachers, masters of theosophy, the beings of light, love and power, especially of knowledge and wisdom to our soul and divine self, feel yourself in the presence of all these great, great beings and let's invoke. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chua Koksvi, to Lord Maha Guruji Mailing, to Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to the Lord Christ, Lord Yehoshua Pamiriam, to all the great masters and teachers of Theosophy, to the Great White Brotherhood, to all the beings of knowledge of light, knowledge and power, and of wisdom. To our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your guidance for greater and deeper understanding of these priceless teachings, for all this knowledge being imparted to us today. We ask you to help us to have a greater understanding, to be able to make it part of our learning, part of our living, so we may become better divine instruments in your service. We thank you for this priceless opportunity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, respect and love, we thank you. Atma Namaste. Thank you, everybody, and welcome to the session. Uh, Bangalore is getting warm. <laughs> it's really summer for us here. Hopefully only a couple of weeks and then the rains will come down. So let's move on to what we were talking about. We are in the sixth chapter and uh, we would like to move on in the sixth chapter. Not sure how much we will be able to complete today. Uh, so let's see where we will go with that. Okay, hold on. My PowerPoint suddenly disappeared. Okay. Can you see it? Is it visible on your screen? 
Yes, purgatory and he heaven. All right, okay. I thought maybe it disappeared. It couldn't see it on my screen anymore. All right, uh, so just to review, um, I, I think because there was a mistake on my part and there were certain corrections that were made, but just to see to it that everybody's got it uh, right here, right now with what we were talking about. When we were talking about the Christian's understanding of purgatory and heaven, we were talking about purgatory, purgatory with reference to purging, with reference to purification. And we were talking about the astral body and the astral life. And so when you leave the physical body permanently and move into the astral body or into your astral life, and whatever you go through in that period of time, yes, whether it's uh, 20, 40, a couple of hours, a couple of days, whatever you go through, either miserable or being joyous, as I put there, that is what you and I refer to as purgatory. Yes. And so yesterday when we were referring to the shop assistant, uh, or the, uh, we were referring to how he would stay in the astral world or in purgatory for about 40 years. Yes. And then heaven is the time when you then shed off the astral body and move into the mental life. And this is more or less a happy uh, time. And therefore, connected to what you refer to in the Christian tradition as heaven. I just wanted to clarify that. And so with reference to shop assistant, we said he would stay here for about 200 years. However, someone who's a bit more learned, a bit more uh, educated, yes, he would stay in the astral life for maybe half the time, so maybe only 20. But the mental life would be much longer. Stretched to, according to the book, with that example was about a thousand years. Yes. So just wanted to clarify these two before I went ahead. And so to move on to something that is more familiar with us, and hopefully we won't have to stay here for too long. Now, in the astral world, there is, as we already understand, there's astral matter on all the various seven subdivisions. Yes. And this astral matter interpenetrates the physical matter that you and I have. And so it will, it will only interpenetrate that division that it belongs to. Yes. And so if you look at the second box, the blue box, I've taken the example from the book where it talks about a glass of water. Yes. So a glass, according to the physical world, is solid. Yes. And so it corresponds then to the seven subdivision and therefore it will correspond equally to the seven subdivision of the astral matter. On the same level, it will have the astral matter of the seven subdivision within the glass. Yes, inside the solid matter. So it could be your table, it could be my laptop, it could be your glass, whatever it is, anything that's solid, because it's made out of solid, which is the seven subdivision for the physical world, it will have the corresponding astral matter of the seven subdivision in it. Yes, interpenetrating it. Now let's move to the next one. So we're looking at the glass. Now the water inside the glass is what we call in the physical world liquid, which is equivalent to the sixth subdivision of the physical world and therefore it will correspond and will have interpenetrating the sixth astral matter of the astral world within it yes and the same holds good for the air that surrounds the glass and water now air for us is gaseous and therefore this corresponds to the fifth subdivision of the astral world and since it connects to the sixth subdivision, it, sorry, fifth subdivision of the physical world, it will automatically then have astral matter from the fifth subdivision interpenetrating the air, right? And so this is something that is new. But however, the, the, the interesting part is what we already know because we are pranic healers, is that etheric matter also interpenetrates all the physical all the liquid and all the air. Yes. And so since it interpenetrates all of that, the astral matter on that level, which is already for us in the physical level, this already is going up one notch higher, which is the fourth subdivision. Yes. So it interpenetrates all three, but at the same time, the astral matter of that fourth division will interpenetrate the etheric body. Yes. And also interestingly, because the etheric body is in charge of the, the, for example, solid, liquid and gaseous, that astral matter will also come into the glass. It will come into the water, into the air. Yes. And so that's why they say all the subdivisions actually still exist in the same, actually um, move around. And therefore you do find 
astral matter of the first level, the second level, the third level, the fourth level, even in the solid level. Because the matter doesn't only remain in their subdivisions, there is slight movement. However, however, they do gravitate to their respective subdivisions on a regular basis. Yes, so they do go into their various subdivisions, but at the same time, there is a certain amount of movement of matter between all of them. All right. So if that is something that uh, you're able to understand from purely pranic healing, yes, the etheric uh, body or the energy body or the etheric double that we talk about, then it will be easier for you to understand that this astral matter then interpenetrates the physical world, which is all the subdivisions, starting with what we just spoke about, the state of solid matter, liquid matter, gaseous matter, and etheric matter. Yes, and so it does go through all of this. And so it interpenetrates all the subdivisions of matter. And so the reason why we're talking about this is with reference to what we were talking about yesterday. And so when a man finds himself in the astral world after death, and however, has not submitted. Remember, we spoke about the rearrangement of matter in the astral body when they die and they try to put the densest matter on the outermost. So if that person hasn't submitted to doing this, the rearrangement of matter of his body will notice but little difference between the physical life that he led and the astral world that he leads right now. Because whatever he was able to see physically before is still there even in the astral world because the astral matter interpenetrates everything, including the solid. So it, since it interpenetrates even my laptop, sorry, oops, it's shaking. So since it interpenetrates also my laptop, even if I leave the body, yes, when I come back, I can still see the physical laptop because the astral matter is also in the physical world. Yes. And so it goes according to the densest. Now, however, interestingly, the densest, if you can call in the astral world also the seventh one as also solid, the, the, the sixth one as liquid and the fifth one also as air, the solid state of astral matter, yes, is not as dense as the, as the solid matter in the physical world on the seventh subdivision. Yes. So even though astral also has its lowest subdivision, which is what they might also call solid, but that solid and the physical world solid is completely different. Yes. This is more dense. Remember, it's, it's grosser compared to this level of the astral. So even though they interpenetrate, you will notice that it is much more subtle. Yes. And it's definitely nothing compared uh, to the dense and the fine gross matter in the physical world. Yes. So keeping that in mind, as this person who hasn't rearranged his, uh, his uh, astral body moves around, he finds the physical world as it is right now. And so he is confused, especially if uh, in his religious texts or, or with all the teachings that he's heard, he thought he's going to go into hell or heaven he's suddenly surprised to see, oh my God, it looks like I've, I've not really left. I'm still here. <laughs> and so it is puzzling for them because they realize that even though they've so-called dead, they've left their physical body uh, aside, they are still living as far as they're concerned in the astral world. Now, when, when uh, they're in the astral world, interestingly, they cannot... Oh, GSK, you've shared something. Sorry, GSK, can you stop sharing your screen, please? <laughs> I didn't know people could do that on mine. Have I not done that? Okay. GSK, you have to remove your screen. Oops. All right, thank you, GSK. So coming back, <laughs> uh, so when you look at um, the condition of a person who's left the body, they seem to find that they are still in the physical world. And so let me get back to my PowerPoint. And so to move on to the next slide. So when they are in the astral world, 
they are able to, because they haven't rearranged and they are still able to see the physical world as it is, they are able to contact living friends, yes, living relatives. However, when they do contact the living friends, the interesting thing is the living friend, because he is awake, is now his consciousness is in the physical body. Yes, trying to move the matter in the physical body, working with the brain. And so the consciousness with reference to the astral body is very limited. Not only that, the astral body is only, remember the bridge through which thoughts and emotions can be then, got, then taken into the, into the physical brain. And so what happens is at this point, they are, they are, um, it's okay, JSK, don't worry about it. So what happens is at this point, when uh, the, they're trying to contact the friend, the friend is still more conscious only of the physical form and the physical life. His consciousness of the astral life or the astral body is limited. And so even if you who are already dead and left the physical body behind and in the astral body, even though you can see your friend, because your friend, remember when we spoke earlier about the different bodies, you realize that the astral body, the densest matter, continues to stay in the center of your system and takes the shape of your physical form. And so even in the astral body, when I look at my friend, my friend looks like my friend. There is no doubt about that. Only thing is I cannot communicate. No matter what I try, I cannot enter into the consciousness of my friend when I am in my astral body. Yes. And so you got to remember that at this point, the physical friend who's awake and living in the physical world is only using the astral body as a bridge to take communication from the mental and astral body into their brain. However, when they go to sleep, it's a completely different situation. Once they go to sleep, they also move into their astral body. So if you are in your astral body at that point and want to meet your friend, when you meet with your friend at this point, no problems. You're able to communicate. And if, for example, you have a lot of grief because you miss them so much, when you express that, it affects that person much more. Because in the astral world or in the astral body that you have, emotions literally become 100 times stronger than in the physical life. So if you feel grief or sadness right now, when you go into your astral body at night, it, it intensifies 100 times more. And so if you find someone who, uh, you know, say it was your best friend who you lost, or it was a parent or a grandparent you lost, when you meet them in the astral world, when you express to them what they feel is 100 times more, and it definitely affects them. Yeah. So um, just to remember that, yes, when we go into the astral world, there is a change. Uh, when your friend uh, is now also in the astral body, there's a big, big difference. Yes. Now, the second thing that I've mentioned there is, where it is with reference to the character, yes? And so we've, I've written there, character is unchanged, minus, of course, the physical body, which means that if the person who has now left their physical body permanently is now in the astral body, when they are in the astral body, what happens is, if he was a very loving, kind person, he will continue to remain, to remain loving and kind. However, if the person was very, very obsessed with, you know, living a life uh, in a certain way, wanted to work and provide for himself all kinds of things, uh, which are materialistic, was, if not, uh, the other example here is a social animal, yes? Loves to be on Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, <laughs> goes for social parties, has to be at all the, you know, well-known discos, pubs, I don't know what you call it today, has to be everywhere, seen everywhere, uh, page two uh, in the newspaper. Now, such people, when they do leave their physical body, you see, when they get into the astral body, none of these things can continue. You cannot continue a business in the astral world. Yes, it's not possible for you to bring money in, uh, to do certain things or make products which you can sell and get money in return. And so what happens is, these people really do struggle. They're not really bad. It's not like they, they have an addiction or they're drunk or whatever, but the, the, kind of, uh, the kind of lifestyle they led, which was so physical, becomes very tough for them when they come into the astral world. Yes. Now, say, for example, the person was a social animal. Now, they can still socialize there, but certain things that they need may not be possible for them. So coming back to the person who 
who wanted to have a car, a big house, yes, and all the things that they did uh, to try and get there, when they try to do it in the astral world, doesn't make any sense, yes? If you had tried to pretend to be someone, when you come to the astral world, you don't have to pretend to be anything because your emotions are shown. It's right there, right? If you think that I don't look good, I can see it because it's right there. You're, you're feeling that way about me. You're thinking that way about me. So you can't deceive or uh, you can't do things that requires a physical body when you move into the astral body. And that becomes a struggle for many of them because they haven't been really using their emotions so much. And so when they come into the astral world, even though they can see the world around, they really don't know what to do. Yes. So some of them do get stuck in this. So, so what happens is most people, uh, when they do leave their physical body and they haven't rearranged uh, their astral body and they, they, what they look around, when they look around, they see familiar places like their home, their office, they prefer to stay there. Yes, and so they gravitate towards familiar places like maybe a friend's house, your grandmother's house, your house, your room, uh, rather than going out there. Uh, so they do tend to kind of stick around in familiar spaces. But for them, they don't consider themselves dead. Yes, to the living, they think they've lost someone. But to the people, uh, I can't call them people, to the beings in the astral world the, with their astral bodies, haven't lost their loved ones. It's we who think we've lost our parent or friend or uh, siblings or cousins or whoever it is. But to them, they have never lost us. Yes. Uh, so I'd like to share something here. Um, you know, we were uh, a bunch of girls. We were about, I think, um, close to about 40 girls, I think, in a class. I'm not mistaken. And in our entire class, uh, you might have heard the story if you've done uh, a course with me. Um, in the entire class, there's only one girl uh, we lost. And this was not in, in the school days. We were all uh, in college at this point. And uh, she was riding back on her bike from college. And it was a hit and run case. And so the parents were wondering where their daughter was and asked the younger brother to go look uh, you know, the usual route she takes from college to the house. And he saw this huge gathering and uh, it was his sister. When we heard it, we were all shocked because, you know, you're, you're young and you never think of someone so young uh, leaving the body. Anyway, time went and uh, we were all in different parts of the world, uh, country, city. And uh, because of social media, we started to contact each other. And it so happened she left her body in the month of August. And so when August came, we were all talking about, uh, you know, school and things. And then one of them remembered that we had uh, this, this girl in our class. And uh, at that point, one of her friends, now she happened to be her best friend, mentioned that she was so possessive about this girl that she wouldn't let her become friends with others. Now, I never noticed that. I mean, you know, you have 40 girls around you. You really don't notice one is doing this or the other. And, and I've never felt that way. But she said I was very, very possessive. And if it was, uh, you know, your pajama parties, it was only the two of them. No one else would be invited. So she said when she lost her friend, her best friend, she says it was a big loss in her life. And then, of course, everybody was sharing about the good things and stuff. Now, interestingly, she's the only girl... Um, in college that knew I had uh, literally done pranic healing because she was actually in the pranic healing office at that point with one of the trustees who happened to be a professor to do an experiment uh, about uh, energizing plants. At that point, she was a home science student. And so I decided to call on her. And so I called her and I said, you know, uh, you remember I've, I've been doing pranic healing and I've been teaching and, and there are certain things. And I said, something that you shared about uh, your friend was very interesting for me. And uh, as we continued talking, she said that, Sumi, you won't believe it, but from the day she left her body, every night she would come in my dreams. Not a single night I can remember that she never came in my dreams. So for me, the friend who left the body realized that this girl needed her so much that for her, her friendship and her being close to her was so important that every night she came to her in her dreams. And she said, you know, the day that she stopped coming is when I had my baby girl. 
once she had her little daughter, uh, which was very recently, uh, I think maybe six, seven years ago only, she says, that's when she stopped coming in my dreams. And then I, I was trying to explain to her about what we understand about this. And she said, really? And, and I said, yes. And she says, it's very interesting because I can't believe someone could continue to do that. But for me, when I heard that, I said, this is so natural. Yes. And for the friend sticking around for whatever number of years or decades didn't matter because she realized, you see, for them, when they're in the astral world, when they look at you, even if you are awake, though they can't communicate with you, when you feel a certain emotion, they, they can feel the emotion. And with a certain amount of, I mean, very simple understanding, I presume, they are able to then gauge what you are feeling. So are you upset? Are you happy? Are you feeling sad? And so they know what you are going through. And so when it's time, I guess, uh, when she would go to sleep and when she goes also into her astral body, they're able to communicate with each other. Yes. And uh, I mean, for me, this was one of those things making me realize that for them, the astral world really didn't change. Yes. Now, coming back to what I was trying to tell you. So for the so-called dead that we call, there is never an impression that they've lost anybody that is living. So whether it was her younger brother, whether it was her parents, she was always around, I'm sure. I haven't really spoken to the parents, but if I talk to them, I'm sure I'm going to hear a few things. So coming back. Yes. Um, let me share this before I go ahead. I, I know you all are writing a lot of <laughs> questions out there, but I'm not going to come back yet. All right. Uh, so to come back. So basically, we're trying to say that the person doesn't really change when it comes to the way they are. So if they have been a very loving and caring person, they will still be loving and caring towards you, minusing that physical body. Yes. And what I mentioned earlier, also the desires are super strong in the astral body. Yes. So whatever emotion you feel, whether it is uh, something positive, something negative, whether it's something as simple as love or joy, or whether it is uh, an addiction, whether it is anger, what you will sense and feel is very, very strong. So if, if you were upset when people were fighting, when you were physically alive, when you are no longer in the physical body and the astral body, when you see them fight, it will evoke in you emotions that are 100 times stronger. Now, until and unless you have figured how to deal with it, you might get stuck in it. Yes. So what happens with most of them, as you can see, they have written there, wears out, uh, but the cost, the cost of going through this wearing out, which takes a very, very long time, gradually it wears out this tendency uh, to drink or the tendency to get angry wears out very, very slowly, but uh, you will suffer a lot in the process. Yes. And so that's why they say, if you already have learned to start to work towards reducing or eliminating or disintegrating these negative emotions, these negative tendencies in us, when you go into the astral world, it will become easier for you to let it out. Yes. So even if you haven't mastered, and Master Chow says, I don't expect you to master loving kindness and non-injury, which means we will still probably be injurious till <laughs> the day we die. But at least if we've been working on ourselves to see, you know, God, I'm going to be careful with what comes out of this mouth, what comes out of my mind and the actions I do, then automatically to a large extent, when you head there, when you are actually there in, in the world um, and uh, the astral world is where you will exist for a period of time, you will be able to overcome it faster. You see, the, the, the other thing is because you have worked on yourself, the lower vibrations of energies are not in you. You understand what I'm saying? So if you've overcome more and more of those lower tendencies, those matter, that, that particular matter, that astral matter of the lower or denser level subdivision doesn't exist in your astral body. So if it doesn't exist, then you will not gravitate towards things in the astral world of the same. So if you can work on yourself, even start the process, you might forget about doing it for a month, but hopefully with the uh, six days of erratic practice so far, <laughs> your bodies are nice and clean and you're working on yourself and you don't stop for at least some time. It's like, you know, when you pick up the momentum, you don't want to drop it. Better, do better not drop it. So you can use it to uh, go ahead. Yes. 
And so uh, to move on, So when, when they look at you, uh, when they're in the astral body, when they look at you, they see your physical form and they can also see this, this ovoid. You remember we looked at the astral and the mental body as the ovoid shape and they can see that like a light, dull mist. Yes, but they get used to it because everything else around it uh, in, in the world does start looking like this. <laughs> now, um, when you look at the person who has been able to overcome to an extent, you know, the lower uh, undulations or the lower characteristics within them, <clears throat> there is a different life for them. Now, so when they come into the astral world, it is not what we were talking about so far, miserable and suffering. Their life is actually quite happy because for them, suddenly they have freedom. Yes. Uh, a woman who had to cook, you know, all her life, take care of her kids, take care of the house. Suddenly she's like, oh, thank God, I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean. I don't have to wash. I don't have any of those responsibilities. So suddenly for many of them, it's, it's a lot of freedom. Yes, you don't have to wake up in the morning. You don't have to go to work. You don't have to earn money and come back. Suddenly there's freedom in their life. They don't have to be responsible for their children. They don't have to be responsible for their parents. They don't have to be responsible for their projects. It's all done. It's over. Nothing physical bothers them. So one of the first things that most of them feel is a sense of freedom. Amazing freedom. Almost like when you were a child. You know, it didn't matter. <laughs> parents might get frustrated that you didn't do too well. <laughs> but you were happy. You would climb trees, you could jump over the wall, go into the neighbor's house, go into your aunt's house, no issues, total freedom. And so you suddenly realize, you know, this world is now mine. I can do what I want, when I want. And so to a lot of them, uh, the astral world is actually uh, quite, uh, quite uh, a pleasant place to be. Whereas those who have been uh, going through, remember we said, even if it's, even if it's a very simple uh, limitation that they're going through and they gradually have to overcome that anger or that addiction in them. That process, it's like going on day after day after day. It feels like they are there forever. And so in some of the contexts, especially in theology or in the uh, Christian context, they call it uh, eternal damnation. Yes, so they feel they're going to be there forever and ever and ever. Actually, no. As you overcome, as you start to heal and work through yourself, even if it's a very, very gradual process, and that's why they say, depending on what you and I created emotionally in this physical world, emotionally, we're going to take that into the astral world. And until and unless we purify out of those limitations, you can't go into the next level, which is your mental level, and definitely can't go home to your higher soul. And that's why this process that you have to purge purify, clean yourself is in the astral world and it can be very, very tough. It feels like forever and ever and ever. Yes. However, if you've started to work on yourself and so uh, the practice of inner reflection and firm resolution, the practice of the blue triangle will definitely be a great tool that you and I can use to see to it that when, when it is time for us to move into the astral world, we actually move into the higher vibrations and therefore, yes, if, if we have the world around us as, as is, is, is different, it's good. But at the same time, we are able to enjoy this freedom given to us. Yes. And so I'm going to go into that freedom a little bit. And uh, people here are usually very conscious. Uh, they're very aware of what is happening. Whereas a primitive person who comes through that, uh, remember we said a primitive person will have a very, very short time and really doesn't know what's happening. And then they just move on. But if you have been able to evolve to an extent where you are, you have started to work on yourself, when you come here, you are conscious of this wonderful, delightful world where you have, where you can do anything and everything. Now, one of the stories um, I remember, I think Master Cho was talking about. Uh, so there were these two people walking, the teacher, and I think it was a student, and they were walking up probably in the Philippines, in, in the mountainous areas. And as they were walking, uh, the sun had kind of set and, uh, or rather setting. And at the bus stop, there was this astral being. Yes. And so the teacher knowing what was happening, went to the astral being and said, what are you doing here? And the astral being saying, I am waiting to catch the bus to go home. As <laughs> Master Joe says, he says, a very honest ghost, if you can call it that. <laughs> very honest one there. And <laughs> so uh, the teacher explains to him and he says, you know, 
you're dead, right? And he says, yes, I'm aware I'm dead. So he says, if you are dead and if you want to travel, you don't have to take the bus. You know why he wasn't taking the bus? Because he did not have money to pay for the bus. It's not that the bus didn't come. <laughs> He's waiting to take the bus, but he can't take the bus because he doesn't have money to go home. And so the teacher explained to him and said, if you are in your astral body, all you have to do is think, I want to be home and you'll be there. And uh, this, this um, astral being, this astral entity was surprised. Like, really? Can I do that? He says, yes. He says, okay, I'm going to try. And in a few seconds, the astral entity disappeared from the bus stop. Right? So the interesting thing in the astral world is that you can create anything you want. Right? And so remember, I spoke about freedom. So if you want to dress in a certain way, you could dress. It doesn't matter. No one cares because if you want to dress in a certain type of clothes or clothing, you just have to intend it's there. Yes. So in the astral world, things materialize very differently from the physical world. Yes. And so that is one of the freedoms that you have. You can do what you want. Anyway, so let me go into a few more things. Uh, so in the astral world, the other thing which I mentioned earlier, there is no support. You don't have to worry about taking care or responsibilities. So that is another sense of freedom uh, for most of these people. Yes. And uh, you can... You can enhance any kind of expression, yes, emotional expression, as long as it doesn't need a physical body, yes? And so if you have liked, for example, going to see different parts of the world because it is so beautiful, you can travel anywhere like this entity did from the bus stop to the house. If you want to go to Paris right now, you can go there. If you suddenly want to go to Antarctica, you want to see uh, the beautiful lights out there, you can go, you want to go all the way down uh, to uh, Africa and see the animals there, you can do that. Yes. So anywhere you want to go, once you're in the astral world, you can. Yes. Whether you've gone in, in the sleep state or whether you've gone there permanently, it doesn't matter. You can actually move into any place that you want. So you can travel globally and Master would say without a visa. You can go and see any place that you want. And if you enjoy it, uh, the problem is because you're in your astral body, what you see and when you, when you feel that love and connection, the connection is really strong. Yes. And so you can travel anywhere. Now, say, for example, you love art. Yes. You love sculptures or paintings. You can go to any museum in the world to see the paintings, to any artist in the world to see his work or her work. You can travel anywhere to enrich your knowledge, your understanding. Now, if you love music, again, you have opportunities to go anywhere. Concerts, um, openings, wherever you feel this, this is going to happen, you can go there. Now, say, for example, you're a person who likes, um, say, science. And there are certain scientists or certain researchers that you're very interested in. If they are willing to teach you, you can go to them and you can even learn from them. Yes. And so these are all the things that you can do in the astral world. Learn, enhance your knowledge. Now, the other thing that you can also do, not just learn, you can also give. Yes. And so if you are a person who wants to take, say, for example, a session like this, <clears throat> I want to teach someone something. You can say, sit there and say, OK, fine, I'm going to teach this to people who are interested. Now, also uh, very interestingly, in the astral world, People, like-minded people, just like in the physical world, come together, right? Similarly, even in the astral world, you come together. You automatically draw yourself together as a group when you have similar thinking, similar way of looking at life. And so that also automatically does happen. And so if you take great delight in trying to share to the world, to the people there in the astral world, more knowledge about this, you can do that. Yes, because you've got to remember that there are many who come into the astral world who have no idea what happened, right? They, they, they have no idea they're dead also because everything looks the same to them if their astral body is not rearranged. And so they're lost. They, they can't figure out what suddenly happened. How come I can't communicate to my parent or my husband or my wife or my child suddenly? And if you are there and you are ready to help them, then you can actually guide them as they come into the astral world. Yeah. So helping them get a grip on their life, which is no longer now in the physical world, but in the astral world, explaining to them and helping them is something that you could also do in the astral world. Yeah. So let me go back. My God, there are 60 questions there already. 
no need for food oxygen no <laughs> you don't need food oxygen so anything that you require <laughs> when you have a physical body there's nothing to do with the physical body so remember yesterday we said uh, if there was no requirement for food which means if this physical body was not there you wouldn't have issues with health maintaining your health yes uh, if you didn't have a physical body you don't have to worry about bringing money home so you don't have to worry about the prosperity or the wealth aspect however your relationships are still connected to emotions and so that will not get lost once you leave out leave this physical body so it's better for you to learn to forgive and forget like we spoke about in the earlier session learn to accept people for the, who they are and love them would be very important essential for you before you leave your body because that is something you will struggle through when you go yeah so wow i'm not even sure what kind of questions these are going to be uh can cleansing the solar plexus clear all the emotional problems with forgiveness and twin hearts to an extent but you need to really really try and externalize it also you need to figure out how come i'm having these negative emotions how come i'm feeling sad how come i have low self esteem how come i'm beginning to have uh, a sense of uh, jealousy towards someone which i never had uh, how come i'm having um, issues with anger and irritation now all this stems from experiences in your earlier life and so you need to go back in your life to figure out when did this actually start and so if you know pranic psychotherapy you try and pull it out of the root yes when you pull it out of that time that particular experience that actually caused you to start creating this program thinking that you're not good enough that you have to behave like a rock only then will you get your work done right so there are many programs that we hear from elders from uh teachers from family which then lead you to think that you are a certain kind of person so you need to try and overcome them yeah um okay let me just go sorry um i don't know where the exact page that i've reached because um i'm using an um uh, you know it's it's not <laughs> it's one of these and so i can't really tell you which page i am on because if i change the size of the font it just jumps a couple of 20 30 pages so i really don't know where i am right now uh, so somewhere in 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 the middle of the chapter i presume is where i am yeah okay so uh, someone mentioned uh something about their uncle who passed away is it possible to meditate in the astral world do we remember gmcks and high beings in that world um you can meditate in the astral world you can heal in the astral world especially emotional state the psychological cases you can however uh, for your for your brain to remember it's still the bridge for the brain to then register what you uh, learned or even if you saw master cho or even if you attended a session to try and remember that when you come back really depends on your brain so most of you might remember wig stuff some some of you might remember more detail if you do please write it down when you come back in the morning yes uh, the story that i i mentioned could be quite similar yes and remember the people who stick by you um even though they've left their physical body is because they realize you're not ready to let them go yes and so if there are people that you feel you have uh you need around you and they might still be around you if you feel you're ready then tell them you know i'm ready you can go ahead with your journey but if you're not please don't force yourself they are okay with being around you they don't have a problem staying around you at all yeah so don't worry about that uh is the study session open to non pranic healers if they can understand because right now i think it might get a little complex for uh, non arhatic basically to also even understand what we're talking about yeah okay uh, some of your questions are got to do with earlier uh, chapters that we've already looked at if you can look through the earlier live streaming and if you still have these questions we can come yeah i'm going to go back to my powerpoint so i can move to the next part all right so basically this is what i was talking about with reference to the astral world now i'd like to go to the next part okay so this is something that i want to share now in the astral world we have what are called seven divisions 
yes, seven subdivisions, just like in every other plane, whether you're in the physical plane, in the etheric plane, on the astral plane, there is always, sorry, not etheric plane, physical plane or in the astral plane or the mental plane, you have seven subdivisions. So what I want to show you is when you move into the astral world, the lowest that is called the seventh subdivision, yes, is basically under the physical earth. Because in the astral world, there is no earth. There is no physical earth, you know, where you can touch the mud and say, this is mother earth. There is no earth. So when you get stuck in the lower undulations, yes, or the lower vibrations of your astral body, then you get stuck in, in the area that is below the earth. And so you feel like you are floating in darkness. And that is not very easy for most people because when they go into this world and they see just darkness, they wonder where they are because they have no idea what happened suddenly. They, they suddenly left their body and they're, they're stuck in darkness. Yes. Uh, hold on. Right. And so this particular class is something for you to remember. And you've got to remember that depending on the kind of vibrations or uh, undulations or oscillations we create, we are then gravitating towards a similar vibration in the astral world. And this is permanent because we're not going to come back in the morning. Yeah. So this is where you gravitate. However, when you look at the next level, which is the sixth level, this is closer to how our world is right now. So even if you have purified yourself on that level and you've come to the sixth level, at least the world around you looks the same. Yes, it looks more or less the same from the house to the trees around your uh, childhood place or wherever it is, the office that you work, wherever you are, it is simple, except for that you do not have a physical body. Everything else looks the same. So it is easier for such people because when they look around, they're able to recognize this world. And in most of them, uh, when we're talking about this, they haven't rearranged their astral body. So it's easier for them to kind of survive in the ordinary life that, that is around them. So, uh, so what happens is when these people do not allow their astral body to then be rearranged, intentionally, for whatever reason, they tend to stay closer to the earth. And hopefully they have already reached the sixth division. Six, sub, uh, six subdivision of the astral world, which is above the physical earth. Yes, and since it's above the physical earth, the whole earth that you and I know of is familiar. But they don't go too far because they don't know what can happen. So they stick around familiar places as well. That's what we spoke about earlier. Yeah. Um, so when, when they go through this, uh, when they go through, uh, through the first or the seventh subdivision, as, as, as I would call the lowest one, they find themselves floating in darkness and cut off to a great extent from others of the dead and the living. Yes, and so they really don't meet others and, 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 and it can be quite tough for them. However, the next subdivision, which we were talking about, which is the sixth, let me just read it out from the book. Life in the sixth subdivision is simply like our ordinary life on this earth minus the physical body. And that's what I've written there. Yes, now the fifth and the fourth subdivision uh, which we were looking at is slightly higher than this. Yes. So basically people are not so connected to the physical aspect of the world. They're not so materialistic. They're withdrawn slightly from the lower aspect of physical needs. Yes. So they go slightly couple of grades higher. However, interestingly, the first, second and third, the highest. Yes. Here, most of them lose sight of the earth completely. They do not see family. They do not see friends, nothing. They have completely withdrawn. They've gone higher. And so they have no understanding at this point. They create their own world. Uh, they are self-absorbed and they just do whatever they like. Now, remember I mentioned earlier that in the astral world, you can create whatever you like. Yes. So you can create your, your own house there. Uh, in this higher subdivision, you can create... Uh, the entire city that you want. And so sometimes the creations that uh, exist there, if you are clairvoyant enough and can see, it's really beautiful. And so some of the descriptions here, they, you see lovely lakes, magnificent mountains, gardens. Yeah. And I'm sure 
today with all the interesting uh, construction and abstract things that are happening, there'll be a lot more uh, that you can see. However, at the same time, you will also find some really ridiculous things. Yes, uh, there will be some water and there's fire going through it. And uh, people who have understanding of uh, certain deities, they create massive images of that. Uh, the peasant might create uh, an animal with eyes all over. You know, sometimes they look really ridiculous. So when they go there, they, they can do whatever they like. Yes. At the same time, it is also a time if it can be used properly uh, because you have allowed the lower emotions, excuse me, the lower emotions to already die out of you. You are now, now not connected to anything that's physical. In the sense physical as in uh, with materialistic things, you are not interested in many of the other uh, needs that people would have in the physical world. Plus, hopefully at this point, you also worked out through your relationship. So you have already said goodbye to everyone and you go to the higher and higher levels. So in the higher levels, you can actually do a lot more than uh, what they talk about. Yes. So the ordinary decent person has in his astral body, but little of the matter of the lowest portion. And so does not create, hopefully hasn't created the, the shell and can survive uh, and usually survives in the, uh, in the sixth subdivision. However, when you try to sense or feel the higher, the, level, the subdivision of one, two, and three, it's, it's difficult for them. For them, they're not even aware that there are those higher subdivisions. Whereas the higher subdivisions, uh, they might lose track of the lower ones, uh, hopefully because they have risen emotionally to a higher degree. And then they can stay, stay in this amazing summer land, create whatever they want, do whatever they want. Now, the plus point here is if you like certain things, you can indulge in it here on a higher and higher level. So if you like music and if you want to create music, you can create music that is really, really beautiful. Yes. Uh, if you like uh, painting, then you can splash on the walls or create a sculpture or create something. You just have to imagine it and it's already there. Yes. And so you can go from whichever level you were on the physical level or the physical plane into a higher, higher degree of manifesting those emotions, those ideas, those expressions of your love, uh, your artistic abilities to a great, great level in the first, second and third levels. Yes. And so these are the levels that you will move to as you come out of purging yourself. You have some time to enjoy the astral world because there is a lot of beauty also in it. Uh, for example, one of the colors that is from the astral world, Master Chua says, is the pink. The lovely pink that is associated with love is from that. Um, an instrument that actually comes uh, from there, from what I remember, is the flute. So the music of the flute takes you, uh, it's, it, they call it celestial music, because it doesn't really actually come from the physical world. Yeah. So these are a couple of things that I wanted to share today. Uh, we are almost running out of time. Tomorrow, hopefully, I can finish this chapter and move ahead. Yes. So I'm going to go quickly to your questions. Sometimes at midnight, we feel someone is holding us tight and we are not able to move. Uh, what could that be? I'm not too sure. <laughs> and if you're feeling the chills, I'm really not sure if there's an entity there who, who knows you're there. Uh, and or are you in the astral world and you're going through an experience that's not very pleasant? I wouldn't be sure of what this is, but that could possibly one of, can be one of it. Can you do inner reflection in the astral world? Yes, you can. I hope you do it properly and you remember what you worked on when you come back. <laughs> That's the problem with your memory. When we do forgiveness prayer um, at soul level, it can cover those in the astral body too. Now remember, whether people are in the astral body or in the physical body doesn't matter. Your your ability to forgive someone is not because they had a physical body of this shape. It is the incarnated soul in that physical body that you have an issue with. So whether they are in the physical body or astral body or mental body, doesn't matter. So if you want to forgive them for what they did or ask for forgiveness for what you have done to them, then you can still do it whether they are in the physical body, astral body, or even mental body. It doesn't matter. You need to let it out of your system. You need to heal yourself before you move ahead. Yeah. Um, Amita shares about her uncle and when he left his body, she was sleeping and saw him saying goodbye and his face glowing like gold. 
um, and she cannot forget that. Yes, there are times that when someone you love is leaving, before they leave, and if you are in your astral state, they might come to say bye-bye to you. And then you say, it's very strange. I had a dream. She came and said bye to me already. Because they are aware they have moved on or they're moving on, uh, they do want to uh, say their goodbyes in whatever state or form they can, even if it's in the astral form, so that it's easy for you to understand that they are leaving. Yes. And uh, this is not just you. There are many people who've had this experience uh, with loved ones before they are leaving and they remember and recollect that they did some strange things before they left. Yes, they'll ask for certain things. They'll want to meet certain people. They'll ask for all the kids to come suddenly and they're like, why would you want to do that? Many of them are aware when it's time for them to leave, especially when they're much older. They can sense the uh, soul withdrawing from the physical body. Yeah, so that does happen. Yes. So sometimes what happens is uh, when you find that there is a, there is a friend who's lost someone, uh, say a spouse or a parent or a child. And if you have a spouse or a parent or a child, you suddenly feel, oh my God, maybe even I would lose. Now, uh, the thought is not because that's going to happen to you, but for you to recognize that you need to value that relationship. Right? So you start to recognize that that mother or that uh, child, you need to have a better relationship with them. So if it suddenly touches you and you're worried that you will lose them, then make best use of the time you have presently with them. And many of you have that time right now with your family. Yes. So make best use of this lockdown period. There is definitely a plus point with staying with family. Yes, you can, you can do your meditations, you can do forgiveness. Um, I'm not sure if you're asking me in the astral world, uh, but if you do, then you should remember that so you can work on it more effectively here. You can't just say, okay, fine, you know, all this work I will do in the astral world. <laughs> my meditation, my purification, my blue triangle, <laughs> my healing, no problem. <laughs> it's not that easy, yes? Uh, you will have to put in some effort. So if you want to do, say, for example, you've done a healing for someone and you realize maybe in the night they might get affected, you can uh, instruct yourself to do a healing for that person later at night uh, to add to what you've done. Yeah. If the person has addiction in the physical world, how will he be in the astral world? Uh, we spoke about this in the last uh, session. It's going to be super tough for them because the desire, remember the desire to uh, drink alcohol is going to be hundred times more. I, I don't even know what that means because I have, I have no liking towards that. So I can't imagine what that could be like. But say, for example, you like uh, something, yeah, maybe sweets or something really spicy and you suddenly desire that when you've left the physical body, you can't have it. It might be your mother's favorite sambar or, or the favorite soup that your friend would make. You can't have that even if you desire to have it. Yes, and uh, the desire is so strong that they might try to do many things. And the example I gave yesterday was the person who loves beer, addicted to beer. They might even try to go into the battle of beer to be able to satisfy that desire, but it doesn't work because you need taste buds, you need the physical body to be able to taste and enjoy it. And that is not possible. So if you can overcome such limitations in your physical state, in your physical body, while you're still alive, will actually help you as you evolve. Yeah. Okay. What is the purpose we are traveling in the astral world? You've got to remember what we said is this physical body needs rest. It needs to recuperate, regenerate uh, itself and repair itself. And at that point, the, the incarnated soul can't stay in the body for about six, eight hours. And so what it does is it uses its other vehicle, the other vehicle being the astral body, to travel in the astral world and continue to learn, grow, understand, prepare, plan, whatever. Yes, so you need to figure out how you want to use those six, eight hours that you sleep. You can program that before you go to sleep. Are you saying so many good things about astral world? <laughs> well, we're talking about the astral world. Uh, Raji, I have no other option but to talk about it. <laughs> no visa required, yes. Uh, if, we can do, if we can do anything and everything in the astral world, then why do we need a physical body to gain experiences? You've got to remember uh, in the last chapter, I think, or was it in the beginning of this chapter, we spoke that 
uh, in the astral, when you're coming down, yes, before you incarnate, you create the astral body, but there's nothing in it. Yes, it's just those, uh, the material that is trying to come further and further, right? The vehicle is just trying to come further and further. But it's in this physical world that you have not only, yes, physical experiences, but you have emotional experiences with people. Yes, with uh, your pets and animals, with the earth, with your house, your attachment to certain things, you start to work on developing your emotions. Now, how much of those emotions are positive? How much of it in your astral body is not very positive is up to you. So you can generate enough emotions. Yes, and that is the material. That proportion of material is what you will take into your astral world when you die. And you will work through that. Yes, but in working through that, you become better and better as a soul because you learn how to, uh, of course, one is overcome the, the lower uh, undulations or the lower uh, emotion, but at the same time, you also develop love and compassion. You, you develop your understanding and sensitivity, your empathy towards people. If you didn't have a physical body, you will not be able to do that uh, without experiences in the physical world to allow these emotions to develop further. And so the point of coming here and going is to evolve further. Yes, and that's what we spoke about in the first chapter. Does emotions change in astral world as does in the physical world? Yes, you can. Even there, if you see someone you don't like, you will still react. Problem is the reaction is all over the, <laughs> the astral body and they can see that you don't like them. Whereas in the physical body, you can cover and put on a mask and a facade. <laughs> in that world, you can't. So it's going to be interesting. How do beings in the astral world keep themselves uh, energetically throughout? You've got to remember in the astral world, you do not get tired. It's only this physical body that gets tired. And so in the astral world, uh, they don't need energy. They have the astral matter which they need to survive, not energy. Energy is only required by this physical body because it has the etheric body and the etheric body actually takes care of the physical body as well. Yeah, so that's different. Um, grouping there also, not the kind of grouping you're talking about. It's not that I'm like, okay, we are architects. We don't like you, uh, you know, doctors out there. It's not got to do with that. You just come together because the kind of ways, uh, the, the, the kind of emotions you have, the kind of creativity you have helps you further become better and better at it. Yeah. It's not to try and put someone out unless you are at that point trying to overcome your jealousy. If that is the case, you will not be at that group level. That is uh, subdivision one, two, and three. You'll be in the lower one till you overcome that. So by the time you come to the higher, you will already have purged, purified yourself of the lower weaknesses or the lower emotions. Uh, but this uh, learning in the astral world gets carried to the next incarnation. Yes, it can. And I'm hoping your brain will, rem uh, will recall that in the physical world as well, not just the next incarnation. Does channeling a person come from astral or mental world? Channeling uh, is usually from the astral world into this world, because once you leave the physical body, the only uh, body that you can take on at this point is the astral. If we are learning something in astral world that comes to the, it depends on your brain. Yes, uh, we just answered that. I didn't study pranic psychotherapy. Yeah, sorry, if you haven't, I, I would suggest you work towards doing the course. It's a very interesting course and definitely helps in, in uh, psychological, psychosomatic problems that many of us go through. Yes, the simplest being stress. It helps you really overcome and deal with stress. Okay, couple more and then I will end. My God, I just saw 42. That was a while ago. It's become 52. Ex nah, this is, this is the problem with this. Can somebody move, has been moved to their astral body, project thoughts or intent or wish something to happen in the physical world? Um, well, they can only project emotions and thoughts to you if you are in the astral world and then affects you. But if you are not in the astral world, none of those things affect you at that point, yeah? Your roommate from 20 years ago still comes in your dream almost every day. You need to ask that uh, friend of yours, maybe there's, there's a message, maybe there's something else there. You need to try and look at that history that you had. I've tried everything from forgiving, gratitude, blessing, but I just can't get her to stop coming in my dreams. Yes, so there's obviously something else, uh, even though you were not very close. Uh, there must be something there. So you need to talk to her rather than just forgiving and blessing her. Say, listen, is there something I can do for you? 
right? So maybe you, you are a point through which they are trying to connect or, or they have unfinished business and they would like to uh, take care of that right now. Okay. How does Hindu rituals help the deceased? Now, any religion has certain rituals that only helps um, uh, with the... I, I'm not too sure exactly how all the religions are connected, but definitely when you, you offer prayers and you offer uh, certain, uh, certain chantings towards that uh, person who has left the body, those positive vibrations will influence the astral body of that person. Yes, because they're all going to be staying in the astral body. So if people from outside, that is you and I, who are not yet in the astral world, send these vibrations towards them, would probably help them, whether they are on the darkest path, that's the lowest or the seventh subdivision, or on the higher, to move forward and give them the strength to realize, hey, you know what, people still do love and care for me and there are these vibrations that are coming. Now, if they've closed themselves up, it might be difficult, but hopefully at some point they will open up and uh, they can move ahead, yeah? Okay. How can a person in the astral body possess a physical body? It can only happen if the physical body is really, really weak. So uh, if you get an, another entity, even if it's an astral entity to come into your body, remember this body can only handle one. So if there is another that comes, you will become really, really weak. That is one. But also at the same time, uh, if you are strong enough, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, they cannot take on your body at all. Yes, so that's definitely there. Uh, a ghost is actually what you and I are referring to right now as the astral body, yes? Okay, Deepa. Let me see if it works, Deepa. Go ahead with your question, Deepa. Hi, Sumia. Namaste. I had two questions. One was we talked about, you know, studying from maybe Master Chua or any of the higher, uh, like holy masters and above in the astral world. My understanding would be that they don't even belong in the astral world anymore. They would have moved much further ahead. So does it mean that when we invoke to them, we can kind of, uh, the astral world is the closest place where we can reach them and therefore they will come to us in the astral world? Um, they might, it might be them, or they might send their senior students if there are enough that need uh, to learn and grow from them. And so it's not always that uh, Grandmaster is going to be at the session. There might be other people who are there in the session, senior people that he would think can represent and teach. Uh, the same thing with great uh, teachers as well, and the Holy Masters and the adepts. And so by invoking to them, we are, if we are entitled, they will come, they will or send somebody. Correct. Yes. If you are and you can actually reach the inner school, then you can learn from uh, the school of that teacher or that great being. Okay. My other question is, we talked about uh, the seven uh, astral divisions, right? Like the, the four lower and the three upper. And when Correct. we talk about the purgatory, we are talking about purgatory from all astral. But, Correct. What is, but today when we are doing all our blue triangles, we are usually removing only the one, two, three, four, not really the five, six, seven. We look at those as higher emotions. So okay. is that where detachment comes in? That, you know, we have to not be so, even in our love, cannot be selfish love and that kind of thing. That's, is that where detachment comes in? Correct. And I think that's where you move from uh, love, which is, you know, uh, where you feel that you love this person so much, you need to possess them. It cannot be shared with anybody. And then you realize love is not that kind of an emotion right? There is something called selfishness that is coming in and you have to allow that to get out of you and then love will expand even further, right? Uh, when you think of giving something to someone, expecting something in return, you realize that is not true giving. When you give, you give, you know, selflessly to someone because they need help and you realize that if I was in that person's situation, I'd like to be helped. So the higher emotions also start going to higher and higher vibrations, Yes. So whether it's love, whether it's kindness, whether it's generosity, all start moving into higher and higher vibrations. And that's what you want to do. So you, even in that, you want to move from uh, level, say, three to level two to level one, and then you move into the mental. All right. Does you. that help you? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's not really only detachment. All right. Aditya. Yeah, Sumi, nothing just to mention. You <laughs> mentioned tomorrow there's the session. It's not there tomorrow. That's all. Oh, 
yeah. Thank you for reminding me, Aditya. So just to remind everybody, tomorrow's session we will not be having. Uh, I would request you to kindly join Master Danny. He's going to be taking a session. It's, it's going to be very interesting. So through your local foundations, those of you who are pranic healers and Arhatic yogis, I think it's for Arhatic yogis, the session. So kindly register if you haven't already registered. Uh, Aditya, could you put that registration link down? So maybe... The registration is closed only at 3 p.m. today. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I'm hoping <laughs> all of you will be there. And we can also join uh, join uh, the teachings of Acharya Dani, which will be really amazing. He's an amazing instructor <clears throat> and I'd love to listen to him. So I'm hoping you can also join us there. So for tomorrow, we won't have it. I'll see you on Monday. <clears throat> Thanks, Aditya. Also, uh, if you know of anyone who'd like to work for MCK's Food for the Hungry Foundation, uh, Karnataka, that is Bangalore City, um, Aditya is actually uh, the person who's been working, but he's going to go ahead to continue with his studies. And so we're looking for someone in case you know of anybody who would be interested in working in Bangalore. Thank you, Aditya. Thanks for that reminder as well. Okay, Ekta, your question, please. Uh, hi, Sumi. Actually, hi. I heard my question, but still, if uh, the vibrations of uh, in the physical world will affect the people in the astral world. I would like to know so if we are doing tithing for them or blessing in our meditation, till how long should we be doing tithing for them? <laughs> because Well, as long as you want, uh, you've got to remember that what we're trying to do is only send positive vibrations and right. create good karma for them because of all the good that they did for us. So in whatever way it works, let it continue. So it's up to you as long as you want to do it. Yes. So people remember uh, people have left their physical bodies 25 years later, 50 years later, 100 years later, and they say prayers and they do things. So I, I think it's, it's, they're still around there on some level, astral or mental. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks, Ekta. Um, sorry. Dipanita? Yes, Dipanita. Nothing? Okay, going to David next. Yes, David. Uh, hello, ma'am. Hi, uh, Sumi. My question is, uh, like in astral world, uh, how long a person can remain in astral world after, you know, living his physical body and for, uh, the reincarnation between that time? Uh, well, astral body depends on how much you've progressed. Uh, we mentioned yesterday, it could be, <clears throat> the example given in the book is, it could be 40 years, it could be, uh, 20 years, it could be even a couple of hours or days, depending on how spiritually evolved you are. Yes. So if you don't have, if you've done enough of purging here on the physical level, then you don't have to do any purging. So you don't have to be in purgatory or in the astral world. You can go straight to the mental world, which is referred to as heaven. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay. Rakesh. Uh, hello, ma'am. Hi. Hi. And, uh, you said uh, the masters uh, really don't come to the astral world. So when we, uh, before we sleep, one day we invoke uh, to study in the inner world and another day we uh, do the service. So in that, uh, normally we say, may I meet my teacher in the inner world for study purpose. Yes. Uh, this, the term inner world here corresponds to the astral world or the mental and the, uh, I mean, the lower, higher mental, lower mental, who, can you please explain regarding since the masters cannot come to the astral uh, world, okay. but we can go to, uh, I mean, sometimes we can go to the No, you, world, you don't, uh, it's not that they don't come. They may not come every time you call them. Yes. Uh, though for them, time and space is very, very different. But if there is a, a big gathering and uh, they are required, they might still come down to teach. But if it's a smaller gathering, they might send their senior disciples or their senior instructors to take on the job of imparting the knowledge and the wisdom. Yes. Uh, now the inner world, uh, the part that we talk about is definitely the astral world. Yeah. Uh, so when you talk about the inner world, the beings in the inner world is usually the astral world. Usually. Yeah. So, so it is ideally uh, good to uh, say the word or uh, by inner world rather than astral world. No. Uh, when. For the well, you can, you can say in a world, not a problem. Uh, or you just say that when I sleep, I'd like to go uh, to the inner school of the certain teacher. And that's it. You don't have to worry thank about you. inner world. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> okay. Lakshmi. Now, which Lakshmi is this? Radha Krishnan. Ah, it's not unmuting. Yes. Lakshmi Radha Krishnan. Atanamaste Sumi. Atanamaste Lakshmi. 
actually you know uh, the whole day you feel so you know without any reason upset and you are so uh, weird and you are so sad and suddenly in the night you come to know that like, your your person who love you know is like you so much is died so how yeah. you felt that before actually because since they are in physical body that time they didn't leave but uh, the whole day <laughs> So sometimes uh, sometimes before they leave they know that they're leaving so they come and meet you even earlier not necessarily a couple of hours before they leave maybe a day or two uh, to say bye to everyone and so when they do say bye if you're upset by it when you wake up you actually are in that emotional state and that's why sometimes you feel you didn't have a good night because what you experience in the astral world may not have been pleasant no you are not sleeping the whole day you are awake you are traveling but right. the whole day, some reason for no reason you are crying for nothing but correct you. because even if you slept for even 10 minutes even if you slept for a short period of time they would have visited you and and given you the message already and that might have upset you already thank you sumi you was welcome lakshmi subramanian yes we just have one more person and then i'll stop yeah okay uh, thank you sumi for the wonderful session i have a couple questions yes uh, number one would be uh, just like uh, uh, we have tools uh, given by master chawla to continue to purify ourselves yes what kind of tools are available at the astral world for the souls uh, um i'm not too sure because uh, i haven't really used any of the other tools except what gmcks has given me so it depends on which school you go to and what they are giving you as tools to help further purify yourself yes so if you go into a religious school it would be different another spiritual school it would be different so really depends on that but if you already know about the tools in gmc cases school you can use that also if you like like some of them were asking in the astral world yeah and uh, secondly uh, how to see uh, you know the the karmic accounts of the karma of the 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 things that we create in the physical world impact us in the astral world and uh, uh, how does it you know come back in the reincarnation uh, well whatever you have done uh, the law says what you sow you shall reap so if you did not have time to complete those in this lifetime when you come back you will then choose uh, to decide how much of it you want to handle the next lifetime and then come with it both good and bad so if you have not done the soul class uh, one of the courses that you could do is that because there's a little bit more explanation of that if not uh, find yourself uh, a book uh, which is called achieving oneness with the higher soul might give you a bit more understanding of what we are talking about yeah you welcome okay bagya hold on yes it's not unmuting okay all right bagya yes atma namaste to me atma namaste uh in psychotherapy we have learned about entities and these entities are the same uh, as a astral being and are you talking about thought entities or thought elementals oh i lost you thought e- elementals elementals are naturally occurring beings in the inner world as a gentleman asked me earlier or in the yes. astral world Yeah, right. so they're naturally occurring beings, uh, which exist just like cockroaches exist in our physical world. Master Chow says. Similarly, elementals exist there, and you want to disintegrate them and not allow them to influence your system. So, in a yeah. couple of sessions before, we spoke about this as well. Yes, yeah? yes, yeah. So that's the and same reference. Is, yeah, and the thing is, when it comes to astral beings, and then just now uh, in the session when you have explained. that the astral being and he feels an addicted person and he leaves the body yes. and to fulfill his desire can he possess any physical body if the body is really really weak that's what was asked earlier yeah. if the body is really really weak they can for a very very short period of time but after that that person will feel super super weak uh, okay. so they might but even if they do they cannot still taste or feel uh, the alcohol going down it doesn't okay. work for them yeah so they okay. really, they okay. might try okay. two three times and then they realize it just doesn't work and they have to gradually let go of the addiction let go okay. of that desire to want to drink yeah? okay okay All thank right. you so much you most welcome yeah and uh, regu is the last person here uh, yes regu atmanamaste sumi ragu sorry um atmanamaste sumi atmanamaste 
Um, so my question is like, uh, uh, does tithing in name of uh, deceased parents, like- Someone what, already what, asked us that, right? You can continue yeah. to do it as long as you want, okay? Yeah, so uh, I wanted to check how many uh, generations, like if we want to tithe, uh, would help uh, uh, to get the karmic levels. Uh, Are you talking about the... parents and grandparents in that yes. generation? Yes, yeah. Okay, so uh, it really depends on uh, what you see in their life, uh, the karma that they might have manifested to try and help them overcome that. Prayers and tithing can be done. Now, normally it's done because uh, you have some karma also with them. And so you're trying to pay that off. And in paying that off, the karma that they have will get neutralized. It's not their personal karma that you're looking at, but it is your karma towards them. So it's your grandparents say who looked after you, not really your parents. Uh, then you realize you, you owe them a lot more and then you want to kind of neutralize part of that. And so you might tithe on a re regular basis for them till you feel, you know, maybe that's enough. But some of us might want to tithe all our lives, even if they're not there. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay, people, with that, we end today's session. Let's close our eyes, connect tongue to our palate. Inhale and exhale, relax the body. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chok, Oxwe Lord Mahagaraji Mailing, to all the great ones, to all the invisible and spiritual helpers, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your priceless teachings, for all the knowledge and wisdom imparted to us today. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better divine instruments. Thank you. Atma. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday. And I might see some of you at 8 a.m. And don't forget to join tomorrow's study session with Master Danny. Thank you. Atma. Atma. Namaste. So many questions are answered. You know, you have a lot in your mind. And so many are asking questions now. So you're getting lots of answers. Thanks uh, a lot. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody.